Hello viewers and welcome to our first look at Test Drive Ferrari then. This has come out of the blue, it's something we've been after all year getting our hands on uh, after seeing some of the early previews a few months ago and of course the trailers and finally I get my first look at it. So first then let's just take a look at the menu screens, take it in, we've got a bit of rousing uh, Ferrari music which is typical of these types of games. See the campaign quick race multiplayer modes there. So I just have a flip through the options. And this is literally my first ever look at the game. All right, what's in here then? So the cars, let's take a look at what cars we've got available. And we can see here there's a whole stack of Ferraris available, but you need to go through the campaign mode to unlock them. I haven't had time to do that. So the first thing I want to do is get into an open wheel Ferrari car. The 87 Ferrari we have here, driven of course by Gerhard Berger. Uh, so we'll jump in there. Let's take a look at some of the tracks available. So we can see the track list. As you can see, quite a lot of them are locked at the moment. And we'll just cycle down, looking through that list. Donington there, Catalonia. Oh, this is quite good as well. We have the old Hockenheim ring, which is always a, a nice addition there. As I say, that's still the original circuit, as I see it, with all the character. I saw some photographs a little while ago of how it's all grown over now. It's become forest again none of the track remains. Monza as well, it's great when you look at the old versions of the circuit, so high speed, so dangerous, but incredible designs, really nice high speed designs. But let's crack on with the first race we can see here. This is an older 1958 Monza course. Equally as dangerous as, uh, as uh, well I say equally, the, the original one with the banking was uh, ludicrous, it was so dangerous, but High speed then away from way we go from the line and uh, diving into the forest. And then we get our first turn on the wheel to have a feel what the handling is like. Whoa, bit of oversteer. Um, and straight away really, yeah, I mean for those who are wondering right now on handling, it immediately does feel like that kind of shift feel to me. Um, the car uh, oversteers for me on the turn in uh, every time, so I have to constantly counter it. There we go, slowing down a little bit. And that's why when I was closing up on the car in front, I didn't really feel like I had the confidence to be able to overtake him around the outside. It's better just to wait uh, until you get a right opportunity. And now up to what will eventually become a Scari. And this is pretty much a flat corner. I was lifting a little bit. You can see the car was understeering a bit, but the style of handling it is, is that it, it encourages you to oversteer into the corner to really sweep the car in. And of course, for me, where my mindset is, that would surely that would make the back end step, step out and you'd lose traction. But it doesn't always work like this. Uh, you'll also notice I've removed the HUD from the screen. I thought, why not have a race without the HUD? Give you guys a nice clear view of the action. So closing up now in second place. What's this difficulty? This is normal difficulty this is on. So good straight line speed for me. I can tell you right now that the hard difficulty is an awful lot harder at the moment, really tough. Um, you'll need to know the game well to keep up with the AI, but I will say also the AI is very early in this version and that's why I'm only racing uh, three cars. Uh, I'm waiting until they complete the AI uh, before showing you any of that in action. So always getting that little bit of oversteer onto the corners though, which always sort of tips my inside wheel, not, not quite where I want it. I'm still trying to find a line for it. You kind of turn in and the car kind of slides around the corner, if you like, rather than actually driving on that line. So it's getting an idea of how it handles. And now I look at the camera views. You can see we have this kind of tinted in-car view, which you'll see on another video, which is difficult to film. I find when I'm filming the screen, this view doesn't always look so good, but you'll see that on another video. The outside car view, I cannot drive from this view, so you won't see much of that from me. And of course then you've got your in-car, which you can normally imagine your dials there. But of course I've not got the HUD turned on, but it gives you a nice feeling of speed. And for this video I'm using the higher view, uh, which helps with the over-the-shoulder filming. But as I say, there is another video looking at Magello. So on to this final lap now. Now I'll be testing out different cars, different tracks, uh, seeing if I can get, uh, see what I can unlock in the time I have for you guys. Uh, if there's anything specific you'd like to see, do let me know, but as I say, a lot of it is locked away, and I hope I, I have the time to unlock it. Uh, but handling-wise, 
as I say, it's, if you've played shift, you've got a good idea of what it's going to handle like. And for me, with a wheel, that generally means oversteer into every corner, and then you have to understeer and oversteer, and it can mean the car's a little bit sloppy. You'll see this through a high-speed corner. Here we go. Throw the car in, and it oversteered on the entrance, not, not where I wanted to. And then we're side to side a bit as we just sort of straighten the car up afterwards. But it does take a bit of getting used to, but either way, nice car, nice circuit, good fun all the same. And uh, we'll have lots more of this to come in the coming days. I say lots more, a few more videos on this and some other stuff as well. But that's it for me for now, viewers. As ever, there'll be more soon.